questions, we have Luciano Vargas and Adrián Pieco who are helping us to handle the QA chat. So first I would like to mention that we'll be conducting the same webinar in Spanish on October 27th and in French on Tuesday, October 31st. So in case you prefer those languages over English, please feel free to join those, those webinars. And also you can use the QA chat for your questions. We'll do our best to answer them in the chat or during the QA session. But if we miss any, you can always reach us at forward at fundaciontutator.ch. Um, we believe that this webinar won't take more than 40 minutes. So let me share the agenda for today. We'll start by briefly introducing ourselves um, and explaining why we do what we do. Next, we'll discuss how technology can transform your organization. Following that, we'll explore our technology and showcase some of the projects that we've implemented. We'll also provide information about Data Forward, our grant program. And finally, we'll address any questions that we haven't been able to answer through the QA chat. So let me introduce Fondacion Tutator. We are a Swiss nonprofit organization, part of Tutator Group. This is a set of social enterprises and foundations that develop software for organizations dedicated to social or environmental causes. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about our funders. Um, so they are not your typical corporate types. They are a couple of engineers with decades of experience in the high-tech industry, and they were doing their thing right in the heart of Silicon Valley. And when they left California, they embarked on this um, global journey, visiting over a hundred projects and exploring how social services were, were delivered. And along the way, uh, they encountered some truly remarkable organizations, but they soon realized that uh, these organizations lacked the right tools to operate more efficiently. So they thought, why don't we use our tech skills to help organizations improve and make a bigger impact? And that's the way our foundation was born. So we are a team of software developers and human rights advocates, uh, and, create, and we create customized software solutions that help organizations save time, allowing them to focus on what's really, really important. So on delivering their services and support, while spending less time on administrative tasks. So for more than 15 years, we've been partnering with many organizations, including nonprofits and government agencies in different countries. Um, for instance, we have Tahari Lebanon. This is a community organization based in Beirut, and they offer social, medical, and educational services to hundreds of people. And until recently, they managed their data with paper files and spreadsheets. And that's where uh, we stepped in to create this comprehensive software customized for their needs so that they no longer have to rely on, on paper files. We also developed CKMX. Um, yeah, we can go to, the, okay, good. Uh, we developed CKMX, a system for managing juvenile justice cases, and we did this working closely with the, Ameri uh, with the Mexican authorities. And this platform empowers justice operators to efficiently track files, uh, manage agreements, set reminders to the judges, um, record judges' decisions, and handle measures and hearings, and all this within a, within a single platform. So these are just a couple of examples of areas that we can support and organizations that we've partnered with. But it's important to say that our work is not limited by geography or specific areas of interest. So now I will pass the mic to Alejandro to talk about digital transformation. Hello. I'm Alejandro Maldonado, a data analyst at Tutator. Up to this point, we've learned about our identity and mission. Now I'll talk about the role technology plays within nonprofit organizations. So 
You might be wondering why implementing digital solutions is important for nonprofit organizations. So let me give you some examples. These are just some benefits of implementing digital solutions in your organization. Of course, we're sure there are many more. First of all, in the realm of social organizations, technology is a game changing, a game changer for cutting costs and boosting efficiency. Imagine a disaster relief nonprofit utilizing a tailored software beneficiary management system. These solutions streamlines aid distribution, cutting costs by minimizing errors and duplication, ensuring resources go to where needed most. It's not just about efficiency. It's a strategic move for lasting impact. It helps organizations better connect with their beneficiaries. For example, a social services agency implemented a beneficiary management software to streamline their communication and support efforts for individuals in need. The software facilitated personalized communication, enabling the agency to send timely updates, resources, and support information to each beneficiary, fostering a stronger connection and understanding of their unique needs. And it finally it increases transparency. For example, a humanitarian aid organization utilized the beneficiary management software to enhance transparency in the relief efforts by providing real-time updates on aid distribution and project milestones, the, pro the software allowed donors and stakeholders to track their contribution, fostering trust and transparency in the organization's operations. So um, in our 15 years of experience, we have identified some obstacles that organizations face when they try to implement new software. First of all, lack of information. Let's face reality. Information comes up with a price. Some organizations don't see, don't know who to turn to or where to start the process of digital transformation. If you look out there, you'll find many software developing companies that offer great products and services, but are those products what your organization needs? How can you know? Will the product you purchase suit your organization's needs? Will it help you effectively fulfill your objectives? Lack of vision and long-term commitment is another issue. Nobody wants to go back when an improvement has taken place. Organizations should know that a software implementation not only requires to have everyone in the organization on board, but also demands long-term commitment. The lack of resources is also another issue. Nobody can deny software is expensive. Throughout our years of expertise, we've seen some organizations that just don't see the point in spending money on new technologies. And who can blame them, right? Uh, most nonprofit organizations work on a really tight budget. Some might think that a tailor-made software solution is a tool beyond their dreams. And finally, the complexity of the software. Some of the software solutions available are too complex or sophisticated. We recommend starting with a simple yet effective software solution that responds to your actual needs and builds up on that. The project can be as complex as you want it as long as you are very clear on your requirements. While these challenges might initially appear daunting, rest assured that our years of expertise have equipped us with the knowledge and skills to effectively assist organizations grappling with these very issues. Now I'll pass the mic to Fernando Parilla, who will explain us a little bit more about our technology. Thank you, Alejandro. Thank you, Leah. Hello, everyone. My name is Fernando Padilla. I'm the responsible for support here at Tutator, and we will talk about our technology here. So I have spent years working in the tech industry, and so far we've learned that many aspects of technology help organizations improve their workflow. And how do we do this by implementing new technologies? We'll take a look at those technologies we use to deliver strong and secure foundations and applications for you. What's our solution? Our solution provides features that improve productivity and decision-making in any organization seeking to exponentially upgrade its impact. Now, how? Over the years, we've created the Tutasdor Beneficiary Management Program or platform, a specialized tool for managing beneficiaries and various procedures. 
Our applications provide what is the most important, real-time data access to beneficiary data or all the users that have been using it. This helps organizations to make informed decisions based on what they actually need and customized feature for the things they need to do. One other thing that is pretty important is that our technology is web-based, offering access from any device and place. Recently, we've developed an online offline application that allows users to use the platform without internet access. This continues the workflow, even if you don't have a stable internet connection, and when you do, all the data is synchronized. This helps organizations such, such as La Butte Nubien that works a lot in areas that don't have stable internet or maybe lack electricity access. This ensures complete ownership and control over the application and its data when we are looking at, at this. Next up, multi-layer. Our system uses a modern architecture that separates the foundation from the front end and the back end using REST API services. Now, this is a bit of a tech term, but don't worry. What this means is that we can easily, easily access all the data between these two layers to provide customized features. Now, scalable and redundant. Our platform is designed to be both redundant and scalable. In tech terms, redundant means that we have backup components to ensure system reliability and to make sure it works even if something is missing. Now, redundancy enhances data security and server access. And what does scalability mean? Scalability means that the platform can quickly adapt, going from serving a small local operation to supporting thousands and millions of beneficiaries globally and users. Our operation is modular. This means that our platform is built with separate modules, each forming a complete solution. This modular design brings two key advantages. It reduces project development time and cost. And on top of that, it allows customization based on customer needs. The modules such as authentication, double authentication, report generation, be it by Excel or Word, and graphical report display have been tested by experts of reliability, addressing common needs across various projects. And one of the most important things, our technology is open source. We utilize open source technology, thus cutting operating costs by eliminating the need for monthly or annual subscription license. In a time where most technology is paid in licenses, open source technology provides us with a tremendous cost-saving solution. The platform's maintenance is simplified and more affordable and any team of engineers or programmers can easily manage the application. While technology is open source, our platform isn't, but clients receive a license enabling to use, modify, and maintain the application independently for full control. Now, we will return to talk a little bit about our experience with Alejandro. Thank you, Fer. So, now that Fernando has explained a little bit about our technology, I'd like to showcase real examples of organizations we've assisted in achieving their digital transformation. So we've created WOW, a software for Wake Up Cafe, a French nonprofit aiding wakers, individuals reintegrating into society after, re after incarceration. Their services span job training, housing assistance, mental health counsel counseling and peer support. So this organization grappled with security beneficiary information during expansion. WOW, our secure and user-friendly cloud-based software, empowers them to track beneficiary data, monitor progress and employment status. Additionally, WOW facilitates report generation to track Wake Up Cafe's impactful journey. With WOW, Wake Up Cafe efficiently manages partners, tracks events, accesses documents, creates and exports reports, and monitors Waker's jobs application and employment status. 
This tool is stream, is streamlined social reintegration services, enhancing process tracking, operational efficiency, and accountability to donors. Another project we've worked on is Yeboa, an innovative system we are developing for Association La Boute Nubien, a French organization that works in West Africa, helping to create a market for Nubian votes an ancient construction technique that uses local, low-cost, and ecological materials. So this organization needed a software that could help them keep track their projects and people involved in them, such as masons, technicians, and others, and be able to enter information offline that could be uploaded when internet connection was available. This particular feature was critical for the organization because they work in areas that lack electricity or inter internet connection and having an offline version for a mobile and desktop application improved significantly the way they handle their data. Like the other software solution we have shown you, this system allows the organization to collect data in real time, decentralizing data gathering and allowing them to evaluate their program's results, changing drastically the way they work. Okay, so how can we help your organization? Um, so far, we've shared some examples to show you why organizations like yours should adopt digital transformation. But I think that we can all agree that buying a special tech stuff can be very, very expensive. And we also know that organizations like yours sometimes work magic to get donations and optimize their budgets. So getting custom software can be can feel like something impossible. But we have good news for you. We are launching the Tutator Forward Grant Program to identify, select, and support organizations in need of a fully customized software. We talked about Ahadi, we talked about L'Association La Pute Nubienne, and we also mentioned Wake Up Cafe. And they are actually, um, the three of them are actually previous winners of our grant program. So this means that your organization can be our next grantee. Um, so, but how does our program work? Um, so to tether forward is your, your passport to an impactful digital transformation. We are not just offering a grant, we are offering a transformation. So we'll give our grantees a custom software solution designed specifically for their needs. But before we go any further, um, I want to clarify what to tutor forward is not, because this is a very unique grant program. And we want you to be sure that if you decide to apply, you know exactly what you're applying for. So to tutor forward is not a grant in cash. This means that we are not giving out any funds. It is not a grant to acquire equipment because we are not giving out tablets, computers, uh, mobile devices, or things like that either. And it's also uh, not a program intended to develop IT type applications. So we are not uh, going to develop customer relationship management software or fundraising or accounting software because there are a lot of commercial software available out there. And what we do is specialized and customized software. So if you get selected, you will tell us what you need and we will develop it for you. And we will work with you the same way that we work with our customers. So our team will assist grantees in gathering and analyzing their requirements, then design and develop a custom software solution to meet those specific needs. We'll also provide development assistance user training, and offer six months of support. Um, the cost of our solutions usually falls within the range of hundreds of thousands of dollars to $1 million because they require thousands of engineering hours. But if you receive our grant, you won't have to spend a single penny on the software solution. And this is all great, but it doesn't mean that you won't have to play your part. So if you are selected and become a grantee, 
you will have to allow us to talk to the key people in your organization so that we can understand how your organization works and also map your processes. You will have to designate a person to be the IT admin so that they can handle the first level support cases. And finally, you'll be responsible for providing the infrastructure. So this includes computers, laptops, um, mobile devices where the application will run and also the server where it will be installed. So please give this serious thought, serious thought before applying. Okay, so to summarize it briefly, if you are a nonprofit organization or a social enterprise in need of a custom software solution, and you are willing to invest time in tasks like document creation, application testing, and regular meeting with us, then to Tata Forward is definitely the grant program for you. So if you want to know how to apply, let me tell you that it's very, very simple. And for that, Fernando will guide you to, through the to Tata Forward platform. Thank you, Leah. Now, give me a moment. I will share about how you can use the forward platform to actually apply and give us the application and a little bit of a look inside your organization. A moment. Okay, here we go. Let me know if you can see my screen, please. Just with a nod. I yes. The share. That's it. It's working. So this is Dutato Forward, a platform designed to be used in three languages, English, Spanish, and French. Now, since I don't have an account right now, or if I wouldn't, I will go to the register app, to the register section, and begin now filling information about myself. Later on, we will fill information about our organization and our project. Now, but here, I'm filling the information for myself. I'm using my institutional mail, my organization name, and the country I currently reside in. Now, how do I learn about Tutator Forward? If you were to come from this seminar, you would choose from our mailing or maybe the meeting itself. When we register, we will receive a code to our email. Please take a look at that, and we will paste it right here when we need it. Now. After we've done the verification of the email process, I can finally log in to the platform. I will do that. And we will continue forwards. Oops, a little bit of a mistake on my part. Let me type that again. Now, what is the total forward for in actual term use? We will fill information about ourselves, our organization, and the project we're submitting. The first time we enter the platform, we will be greeted with a tour. I strongly recommend you do this tour so we're on the same page about everything that's going on within the platform. And so we will take a little bit of a sneak peek right here and get this tour, the tour started. So it guides you through every step of the platform. This is designed to make you fill out all the information that we need to get to know you and you, us. Now, the first thing we see is the home, where we get to see all the percentages of the sections to be filled out. Now, once I have everything filled out to 100%, I can submit my application. So first of all, I'll go to my profile, where I give information about myself. You know? And I will start editing my profile. I won't finish the editing right now, but we'll take a look at how it is. Once I have everything ready, I can save the changes and the percentage with update. Moving on to my organization, it is the same process. I go there, I see everything that is missing, that is required, begin to fill out. And last but not least, even the most important bit is the project. Well, you will get to tell us everything about your project. Now, once we have everything ready, the submit my application one will be enabled and you can submit applications to us. Now, 
at any point, if you need to invite more colleagues, let's say you're not the only one who's filling out the information, you can do so through the invite button. Anyone in your organization can be invited. You can invite it right there. And if you ever have some problems with the platform, need some support, we have the chat available and ready to use. Once you use the chat, you will be able to contact any of our support members to help you with anything you need in the platform. So it's pretty good. Now we will, now that we have looked at the workflow for the data forward, we will continue with the presentation. Now, we have looked at how do we use the Tutator platform forward. This is the link, which is in the mail training. And now the next important bit, the important dates, the schedule for forward. So once you have submitted your project, we will start reviewing them and notify you if you pass the first filter and move on to the next stage, which is the second form submission. We right now are taking applications and proposals. So once we get through this first stage, we will enter the second form submission, which is from December 13th to the 5th. After that, we will do another pre-screening and we will announce the winners on March 7th. And we will continue to work with them on forwards. Now, before we move on to the things that we need to remember, I would like to open up the mic to the QA section. Do we have any questions that must be in that must be answered, or should we continue on? Yeah, we do have a couple of questions. Heard. So I think uh, some of you are um, asking about about the support period and what happens when this support period ends. So, and they are also asking about the, um, about the server. So, yeah. um, yeah, let me yeah. answer that for you. Yeah, go for it, please. Yeah. Okay. So one thing that's great about the Tutter and our support period, I'm sorry, is that we're not like other organizations where they say six months of support and then cut out communications completely when the six months are done and you don't pay basically, right? So we're not like that. In our contracts, we say six months of support. And then after those six months are finished, we maintain all communications. The things that we don't do after the support is to add new things to the platform. You know, we don't add new functionalities but we still keep um, the communication. We still help you with anything you need. We just don't develop any further. Maybe we can fix some errors presenting and, and, and stuff like that. And with the own server questions, yes, you do need your own servers. So what is the process for developing our softwares? We develop our softwares in our test instances, our test servers. We allow you access to those test servers while we're developing the platform. And when you're ready and set to have your own server, we help you through all the process of installation. So you can have it in, in your own service. This is for your own sustainability as a platform and as an organization, because the software will remain with you forever. Yeah, I would like to add as well, and because you talked about a very important uh, topic sustainability so the idea for us is not to um, stay with you forever because we want you to be independent when using your software so I think we mentioned that you would need to provide the um, IT admin and this person um, would have to uh, be in charge of the first level uh, support so this means that you would have someone in your organization that knows how to uh, help people for the for the first level uh, support cases and if you need something more complicated that's where we come in and as fernando said um the support period sometimes gets confused with the 
uh, a period where clients or, or grantees um, ask for new features, but uh, we want to clarify that the support is only to uh, fix bugs or problems that can arise. So I hope that that uh, answer your questions. Great, so I think we can continue for it. All right, do we have any other questions that need to be answered? Just let me check that real quick. So Marco has a question, how many projects can be applied for a single application? Can you give me a hand in that, Leah, please? Yeah, so last uh, time we we were receiving different proposals for uh, one organization, but this time is one project per organization. And yeah, we also have another question. How detailed should be a proposal? Will there be a possibility to talk to someone to talk through our organization's needs? So uh, we also change. I, I know that we have uh, many people who participated in our last uh, Tutato Forward. And we, you will see that the platform changed a little bit. Um, we know that last time it was very, I mean, not complex, but the, the application was more, yeah, um, yeah, a little bit more complex. So we're making things easier now. So this time, the first phase is very, very simple. So we want to easily understand what your project is about. Um, so the first part of the application is, is very short, it's very simple. It will not require from, from you a lot of time to uh, providing the details. And if you move to the second phase, that's when we will ask for more details on the project um, uh, and the software that you are looking for. So if we have questions, we will send them to you so that you can give us all the details that we need uh, for you to move to the other phase, which is the interviews. So, and that's at that point, that's where we will be able to, to chat and um, yeah, to chat more about your, about your needs and what you're looking for uh, uh, talking about the software. Great, thank you, Liam. I have another interesting question right here. Maria says, how do you guarantee the data safety? This is a very important question. I'm re really glad you, you asked this. So data safety from our end, we have everything that needs to be encrypt encrypted in our platforms is, so let's say softwares, users, important database information, all of that is encrypted. Now from you, from project to project, this varies a lot. There are some projects where you need everything encrypted, and we can do that in conjunction with you. There's other projects, no other proposals, where you just need certain bits of the platform encrypted. Maybe you need enhanced security. Maybe you're working towards uh, the GDPR standards. Everything related to security will be reviewed with you. So I. I cannot give you an exact response for what technology we use for encryption right now, but rest assured that if you need encryption and security, we will share all our processes together with you. So let another interesting question is Bettina is asking, are there regular updates of the software that can be downloaded and installed? So yes. This a uh, not per se download and install, but we do keep updating our platforms regularly. So as Mia mentioned, we have two periods, two big periods when we are developing our software. So we have the betas where we are developing the features as we go. We post continuous updates that contain new features and we're testing them. That's a big part of the development process. Now, the second big part is the support stage where we post updates, but they no longer contain new features. They contain bug fixes, um, little to small changes, things that could help you perform your work better, but nothing actually new. Now, these updates are not download. We work in conjunction with you to keep them permanently updated through your database or through your or your provider. 
but there's not something, a file, let's say, that you physically download. So what other questions do we have? How many test environments are we entitled to? This is a really good question. Thank you, Samuel. So right now we are working with two environments, two test environments. Or let's say, let me rephrase that. Two environments per se. One test and one production. Now inside your test instance, we can work with multiple databases to include redundancy, right? So even if we have just one test environment, we can have multiple databases. Now, this is something we work with you and, and your IT engineers. And so we can um, maintain the reliability of, of the software. Now, another question, same Samuel. Thank you for asking is, do you offer training for new admins? Mm, if it's during the support period, yes. So how does it work? We offer our first training for the trainers. So we teach the admins and end users everything they need to know about our platforms and then they replicate it from there. So let's say the case arrives where we train a singular admin and then another one joins the team during the support stage. We can give a new training to that admin in particular. But if it's outside the support age, maybe we will need to coordinate a little bit further. But we always do what we can to, to help you use our platform. Let's say, do we have another question, Leah, Alejandro, maybe? Or should we move on? Um, what else do we have? So... I have an interesting question here. The IT admin needs to be good with IT. Yes, this question is very important. So the IT admin needs to know a bit about everything, correct? Mostly software development and databases. Why? What for? It's for you. It's so the IT admin can maintain your reliability, your software, your updates. So we develop the software for you in conjunction with you. We install it in together with you, but we don't actually maintain it once it's in your servers. We help the IT admin make all the updates, um, produce all the standards that they need to keep uh, data sustainability, but we don't actually do it ourselves. So the IT admin must know all the things related to, to all the processes. Okay, uh, we also have a question about the size of the grant. So our the cost of our solutions usually falls within the range of hundreds of thousands of dollars to $1 million. So it actually depends on how many uh, engineering hours your, your project takes. Um, what else do we have? Uh, Julia is asking, can we propose a specific program? We as an NGO have a healthcare clinic and we need to the program for managing digital records. So yeah, um, you can either propose a project that helps the whole organization or a specific program. And the program that we talked about, uh, the Tahali program uh, in, in Lebanon, uh, helps a community center that, that offers health services and they and we're helping them to manage this um digital records at the clinic so that's definitely something that you can you can submit someone else was also asking about uh what happened if they forget to add a detail in the application and then afterwards they realize that they want to add that to the project so don't worry like the idea of the application is for us to understand what we are looking for, and if it meets our, um, if it uh, fits our program, and you move to the interview phase, uh, we can talk more in detail about your needs. And then, if you get selected and you become if you become a grantee, the first part, the first um, part of the process is the analysis uh, gathering. So. Uh, requirement gathering, sorry. So we will spend a couple of months with uh, with youth talking to the key people uh, 
from your organization to understand what you need. And what usually happens, it always happens in, in all of our projects, is that uh, that's the time when people start to realize other things that they that they could use or that they would like to see in the software. So uh, once this period ends, we will document all your requirements and we, we will map the processes and then we will start developing the application. So there is a time where we work together to put all your wish list together so that we define uh, how the project is going to be. Great, thank you, Leah. I have another good question right here. Emmanuel says, what happens to the service after running the grants? Is there any attached cost for maintenance? No, there is no cost relating to the support stage. The support stage period or maintenance period, it's all the same. It's six months where we update the platform, work with you to improve and fix errors. We do run a lot of maintenance work in this in this um, time period, and there's no cost involved in this. This comes with the grant. Now, extending the duration of the support contract can be uh, discussed afterwards, but for the original six months, no cost related. Now, let's see another good question. So we don't have any IT admin or staff, are we disqualified? We only have two part-time staff. So, Having an IT admin is really, really important, okay? So if you don't have an IT admin right now, that doesn't mean you're automatically disqualified. No, it doesn't. But on the long run, if your proposal gets accepted, you would 100% need to get um, staff working on the IT department. Okay, I think uh, I think all the all the questions have been answered. Yeah, yeah. just one more. I think uh, Emmanuel is asking about the grant duration. All right. So, what happens to the service after running the grant? Is there any attached? Oh, okay, and the cost of maintenance. So, the grant duration. Um, it's we don't have a specific time for the for for the grant because it's. I mean, the process, as, as, as we explained, it starts by uh, talking to, to your people and understand what their, what your requirements are. So that can uh, take a couple of months or a little bit more. And then afterwards, we'll start developing the, uh, designing the application and, and, and we'll start with the development. And we'll have these beta periods um, that Fernando talked about. So we will, um, while we develop the application, we will start giving you parts of it. So we'll have this testing period so that you can also give us your feedback. And once you are, you may, uh, we are sure that that's what you need. Then we move to uh, another part of the of the software. So it actually um, depends on the size of your project. So it, if it's a, a small project. It can take us, I don't know, like six, six months, the whole thing, plus the six months of support. If it's a bigger project, it can take uh, one year to, to complete the, the development and then the six months of support. So it's very, yeah, it depends on the size of your project. Um, and they were also asking how many projects will be selected. And this is also, um linked to my previous uh, response because if we have uh, many small projects that we can see that we can we can develop we can we can um select i don't know 10 projects five projects but if we have the finalists are big projects and it will take us a year to develop the whole the whole thing maybe we will also pick two projects. No? So last time, last uh, to Tutor Forward, uh, last time we launched Tutor Forward, we picked two, two projects, but they are very big um, software solutions. So it's taking a lot, a lot of time to develop the whole thing. Okay. Great, uh, well, one more question that I'd like to answer yeah, sure. and move on, which is really important as well. 
I'm, I'm sorry, I really like technology and I like answering to all of you. So uh, all the technology questions, I really want to, to get them out of the way. Someone asked, is there a maximum number of license or accounts for the application that we will be granted to have? Really good questions. There is no limit at how much data you can input in, in the software. So if you're referring to license as in users, how many users can be used in our platform? It's unlimited. It's up to you. It's up to how much database space do you have, how much users you will have. Maybe your software needs five users. We can do that. If your software needs thousands of users all across the world, we can do that as well. There's no licensing for users. You can have as many as you want that for users. And for the actual beneficiaries of the software, meaning um, what are you registering in the platform, that doesn't have a limit as well. You can input as much data as you want. The only restriction is your database and your data space. Okay, I think with that, we can move on. Yeah, so, please just don't forget that if you have uh, more questions, you can always reach us at forward at fundacion2tutor.ch. Yes, please. If you haven't answered any of your questions or maybe some of the answers haven't been clear, please contact us at the mail. Now, moving forwards towards the end, we will do a little bit of a briefing. Sorry, okay. So, a little bit of a resume. What things do we need to remember about this meeting and this webinar? To tap the forward is for nonprofits and social enterprises that want a custom software. If your organization has effective strategies to measure its impact and is willing to maintain software, then you should apply to the other forward. But remember that our funds are limited. So if you aren't selected as a grantee, please feel free to connect with us. If you secure funding from other sources, we are ready to team up to embark with you to digitally transform your organization. And last but not least, you have until December 4th to send your proposal. So today's webinar was just a sneak peek of the incredible things we can achieve together. To see the whole deal and maybe even snag a game-changing software solution, dive deeper and discover more about Tutor Forward, please feel free to go to tutorforward.com. Thanks for being a part of our journey and have an awesome day. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Have a great day. I'll see everyone. We Thank will you, be waiting for you. questions. Thank you, Alejandro. Thank you, Leah. Thank you, Adrian, Luciano. Have a great day.